Good morning, everyone. Um, so I'll speak about supply chain transformation and the approach that we can use uh, through analytics and machine learning to be more efficient uh, about how can we streamline the operations of the businesses and also probably look at some, a couple of you know, real-world examples which probably could uh, put some skin in the game and we won't just talk about the context, right? So, <clears throat> so, so my name is Archit Bansal. I'm from, oops, sorry. So I'm just trying to <laughs> go through, yeah. So my name is Archit Bansal. Um, I'm from eClerks. I work as a lead strategist. We have about 23 years of experience. We're also one of the platinum sponsors here. So please come and speak with us. If you have any further questions after the presentations, please come and speak with us. We'd be more than happy to, to take it through uh, more details. Um, so supply chain, basically, you know, as we all know, uh, it's more about how can we use our existing infrastructure and be more efficient about uh, running the business in the smoothest way possible. Data we capture on a day-to-day -day basis. It is all about how can we. Uh, it is all about how can we be more efficient in using the data. So as eClerks, uh, you know, working in this industry, we offer a range of solutions. We'll be focusing more on the supply chain optimization today. Um, Martin Christopher, he's a professor in supply chain. He once said. The competition is not between the business. It's about supply chain. Can we streamline our supply chain in the best way possible? If we can do that, I think there's an increased pressure to, to deliver products uh, uh, in a faster way possible, in a more cost-efficient way. So the idea is to, is to basically uh, be more efficient and more streamlined about our supply chain. So there are different range of solutions that eClux provides, starting from order pick optimization, inventory analytics, demand forecasting, network optimization, warehouse optimization, and route optimization. I'll be focusing on a couple of use cases, or real world examples, I may call it, uh, in today's presentation. The idea is to, is to talk about uh, what we have done for our existing clients, and it might be of interest, you know, and it'll probably put some more business challenge in focus. So as we know, uh, benefits related, you know, it's, it's all self-explanatory. I'm not gonna just focus on the slides, but as we know, uh, cost, cost reduction is, is the main thing. As long as we can reduce the cost, the way we deliver it to the, to the stores, the way we deliver it to the customers, I think that is a win-win scenario for all the business and different organizations. The idea is to make sure that we have an improved customer service. As long as we are faster, more efficient in delivering our products, I think, that is, that is something we would like to achieve as part of our organization. Sustainability, of course, it is very important to be more sustainable in the way we run our businesses. So we, there's benefit around that. We have increased agility and, and responsiveness. If we are more efficient in our supply chain, we can be more agile. We don't need to stock up you know, all the products thinking we'll be able to sell it at the back of the store. We can be more agile in our process. We can forecast more accurately. We can be more responsive. To the, to the demands you know, related to the events like Eid or Christmas, you know, where we often face misallocation of products to the stores. We can talk about risk mitigation. So there's always risk for the category buyers, for inventory managers, for forecasting inventory planners. So we want to make sure that we give them enough, enough uh, certain view in the future that they can mitigate the risk while buying the products. Uh, innovation and competitive advantage is, is very important because, like I said, it is not a prize war game. It is more about how can we be more uh, competitive in terms of streamlining our business, and supply chain transformation can help us do that. So we have delivered some of the benefits around these areas to our existing clients, and I'll be talking more about that in the next slide. Okay. So this was pretty much the context, and I'm not going, I'm not going to bore you with all more about supply chain. I think it's all self-explanatory, and uh, we, can, we, can, we know it already. However, I'm going to talk about two real-world problems. The first one is, um, for a, we did it for a major supermarket retailer. Uh, the idea was to optimize the units of delivery, <clears throat> the way they deliver the products from the depots to the stores. So it is all done in an automated fashion. So we have depots and you know, we pick up the products in a tray size, 
And then for any SKU possible, we pick up the products based on the demand, and then we deliver to the stores. For example, um, if, you're, if, you're, if, you're trying, if you're sending, let's say, a bottle of milk, what we will do in, in an automated way, we will look at the tray size, let's say a tray size has 30 capacity of fitting in, let's say, milk bottles. However, based on the demand, we will fix one tray size and say, based on the demand, we will send as number of trays as required, and it may lead to waste, it may lead to less availability, because there's always uh, one tray size uh, that fits all kind of scenario in most of the retailers, uh, for most, most of the retailers. So what we did for them, uh, we tried to create a simulated, uh, a simulated algorithm, and what we did, we basically divided that into two different parts. We said that instead of sending one tray size, we'll have two tray sizes, and we'll also have single pick as another mode of delivery, in which we'll be able to look at the stores in two different ways and deliver it to the, to the business. So just going to the next slide, which is more about the business analysis, like I said, was inefficiencies due to single size of tray delivered across the stores, leading to wastage and high operating costs. Recommending units per tray that based on store demand to improve overall profits. The most interesting thing that we did in this, in this business uh, problem and for the, for the specific client was we looked at their end-to-end -end profits. We didn't just say, okay, we can improve your waste. We can improve the availability on the shelf. We didn't just say we can, we can make your supply chain more efficient. What we did, we took a step back. We said, if you look at your end-to-end -end profits, so your end-to-end -end profit basically means what is your sales? What is the forecasted demand? How much are you buying? What is the labor cost? What is the, what is the stock transfer cost? What is the cost that you have to pay to replenish the shelf every time? So every time a, a shelf stacker kind of takes a, takes a toe, he has to come back. So what kind of per hour rate did you spend on that? So what we tried to do, we tried to create an equation around end-to-end -end profit. And then we also looked at the predictive algorithm to understand that if one part of that equation changes, then how is that going to impact, impact the availability, the wastage, and then the idea was to create a range of algorithms which can be designed around simulations for each of those scenarios. Now, just to put it in more simple words, what we exactly did, we said, okay, if I put a scenario of, let's say, tray size one for unit one, uh, for tray one, and tray size two for tray two, then how will that change impact the equation for the end-to-end -end profit. So here we are trying to maximize the end-to-end -end profit by going to an index searching, by looking at all the possible combinations. We, we spent about 200 million, uh, we will get about 200 million combinations uh, to come up for one, or one of those scenarios which can help us define that yes, this is end-to-end -end profit and you can maximize the profits. We didn't just stop over there, so we were involved in you know, an end-to-end -end implementation of this. So we looked at you know, the algorithm design, we looked at the simulation engine. We also gave them a front end. So the front end kind of allowed them to, to also do a user input based scenarios. So for example, if I'm a forecasting inventory manager, or if I'm a category buyer, what I can do, I can look at what the algorithm is telling me, but I can also feed in my own inputs and then look at if I am to go with my gut shot, then what is it that I'm going to get? So you basically can look at different scenarios, and then say, okay, which one is going to work out for you? We did a proper implementation and training to the inventory managers and category buyers, and I think they, they were pretty blown off with that because they, they, they could see that there was $18 million per, uh, plus benefit in tangible way, where they could see the cost reduction, waste reduction, they could see the profits were increasing, they could see the supply chain overall uh, uh, operations were increasing, it was becoming more efficient, and then there was incremental sales because you now have better stock availability. So why incremental sales? Because we're not reducing the stock, uh, the wastage, but we're also giving them a better shelf looking uh, shelves. And then we are telling them, okay, when the, when, when the customer comes in, there's not a lost opportunity. It is that they are able to buy what they're looking for. So, and then efficiency, like I said, so 200 million simulated scenarios in approximately 25 minutes. So we built a cloud-based solution for them, which is pretty transferable to any of the businesses. And the idea was to, is to, to use this not as a tailor-made solution, but also a, a bit more uh, customized, and we can always plug in and plug out the way we want to do it. Um, that was one of the business cases I want to talk about. The other one is uh, estimating the revenue opportunity lost due to lack of stock availability. Now, 
as we all know, that for events like Eid or Christmas or any of these big sporting events, if we have a misallocation of products to the stores, then what we end up doing is we either have a lot of wastage because we send too many products to one of the stores, or we have a lost opportunity because the products were not available. Now, at that time, it's possible, it's not possible to then create inefficiencies within the supply chain because then you want to call other stores and try to figure out that how do we get the stock that we can sell. And then we may, know, we may not know that the customers will come back because it's probably the, the lost opportunity already. So the idea was to create an algorithm design over here which can cluster the stores based on their different preferences, their different trades, their different demands, and then look at all the stores in different chunks and say, okay, if I, need, if, 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 I'm, if I am to forecast the demand for these kind of stores, then what will that look like? And the idea was initially to basically move those stores into demand transfer. What that basically means is that stores that were getting most stock will have a demand transfer ratio, and those stocks will be moved to the stores where there's a high demand. And then eventually we will use that basically to, to optimize it overall lost opportunity. Okay, so what we did over here was basically we, we take a step back again and we rhetorically uh, calculated what was your lost opportunity when the last event happened. If you were to change that scenario and send these many products to other stores, you would have got more uh, dollar value uh, in that respect. It was a big project. Again, we got about 15, $55 million plus of annual benefit by optimizing 5,000 SKUs in about approximately 600 stores. All, all, of this, all of these problems that I'm talking about are done at SKU level. The good part of this is these are business challenges that we don't want to talk about sometimes because we always look at the top level aggregation. But what we wanted to do was we look at the SKU level and you can actually filter out that one SKU and say, how is that impacting my business? How is that, what is it that I need to do to make sure that my profits are better? And what is it I need to do that my cost can go down further? So. We also had about increase in availability for categories uh, by running through that tool about 4.1 percentage points. What that basically means is that we had stores sitting with the appropriate amount of stock at the time of the events, and then we were using that to make sure that we sell it, and there, were less, there was less wastage because our, our accuracy around demand transfer and store allocation of product was, was pretty high. Um, I just, I just put uh, one of the snippet of one of the uh, inventory planner, a really useful tool that will help us improve availability and place orders better, especially during peak periods such as aid outfitter. So I think having a visibility of what is it that we are going to lose if we don't play our cards right is, is very important, and I think this is something we try to provide. Um, moving on to the last slide, which is while we talk about different business challenges, I think one thing we definitely need to talk about is what the future looks like for supply chain. I think, as we can see in this slide, there, there's an increased complexity happening, right? On the left-hand side, we see the data is going up and up. We see more complexity happening. We only used to look at ERP solutions in the beginning, but now we look at different kind of solutions. We have CRM, web, big data coming in. It is very important. It is very, very important and very pivotal to make sure that we use that data, and that can be done only by using machine learning or advanced analytics approach. It doesn't matter whether we look at the fancy algorithms or not. It is very, very important, however, to make sure that we're on top of our data and we're reading every possible insight from that data to make sure that we are making our inventory planners and also making our, you know, making, uh, our category buyers uh, more efficient in the way they make their decisions. I hope I didn't rush it through, but please feel free and come and talk to me. I'll be just right over there. If there are any questions, happy to answer. Thank you.